Tomorrow, the House Rules Committee will debate the impeachment resolution against Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. For House Republicans, they see impeachment as a political tool to settle their differences over immigration policy. But as Aaron Blake writes in The Washington Post, quote, Mayorkas' impeachment is undoubtedly doomed in the Democratic-controlled Senate, meaning this effectively amounts to a messaging exercise. Joining us now, Democratic Congressman Pat Ryan of New York. Welcome. Thanks Congressman, it's good to have you at the table. Thanks for welcome, having me. Welcome, welcome. So I, I want to start with the uh, Washington Post editorial board um, regarding the Mayorkas impeachment. It says, uh, instead of this phony persecution, the secretary Republicans should be spending their time on constructive efforts to reform the broken policies and bureaucracies, including an overwhelmed and outmoded asylum system that have rendered the border so chaotic. That, I think, encapsulates the, the, the sentiment of a lot of folks out there, even people who, you know, may agree with, you know, oh, Mayorkas didn't do this and Mayorkas, did, Mayorkas did, didn't do that. How, how does this effort by Republicans right now elevate the opportunity for Democrats to speak a little bit more concisely and more, more um, strongly yeah. on their border intentions, given the underlying concern for a lot of Americans, which Republicans think they're playing off of, or at least trying to play off, is this fear of the border, no control at the border, enforcement at the border. The Washington Post sort of encapsulates an opportunity here. How, how do you see it at this point? Yeah, I mean, my district, uh, Hudson Valley of New York, purple district, people just want us to actually, crazy idea, solve the problems. And I, I think the frame here is increasingly clear. You either come to Congress to be a politician, or in my view, you should come to be a patriot, mm -hmm. to actually solve problems, bring people together. And when you have an opportunity, I mean, historic bipartisan, bicameral opportunity to increase border security, something I've supported uh, consistently, let's do it. It's a you know? conservative I mean, bill that they're talking about right well, now. Well, securing, securing our border, the, the, the bipartisan proposal Securing our border, I don't think, is even partisan. That's mm -hmm. something foundational to your responsibility as a sovereign nation. Uh, immigration policy, I think we can have more uh, nuance and disagreement uh, on, but mm -hmm. we've got to secure our border. I mean, that's something I know even going back to my Army days. Congressman, I take your frame, politician versus patriot. I would add in a another word, which is provocateur, which is, I think, mm. a yes. reason a lot of people— um, a lot of members of the GOP specifically now come to Congress. I want to take a listen to what, uh, what Ken Buck had to say about this impeachment. Here you go. This is not a high crime or misdemeanor. It's not an impeachable offense. This is a policy difference. Um, let me, from the outset, say there is a crisis on the border. Uh, the, the law needs to be enforced. Um, but uh, if we start going down this path of impeachment with a uh, cabinet official, uh, we are opening a door as Republicans that we don't want to open. The next president, who is a Republican, will face the same scrutiny from Democrats. Okay, so so much there from Republican Ken Buck of Colorado, which is you can sense the frustration with the provocateurs, right? That folks who actually want to be getting stuff done are getting to the end of their rope where they're saying yeah. enough of your shenanigans, because yeah. guess what? The people who would care about a Mayorkas impeachment, they're already with you. There's nobody new like politically anything, you are right. bringing to the table right. by going after him. Yeah, and, and again, it's just... You, people have lost touch. These folks on the far right have just lost touch with where people are in the real world. I mean, I'm uh, yeah, talking to folks every single day. They're they not talking about solve, my orcas? They want us to solve the problem. <laughs> I, and I know that almost sounds naive, but that, that has to continue to be centered. So, you know, I give, I give uh, Congressman Buck credit. I put him sort of in that camp of let's operate together, let's be patriots. I love the provocateur frame. I think that's right. And we're seeing that, you know, with, with the speaker's recent proposal just yesterday, I believe, uh, instead of working on a bipartisan, comprehensive mm -hmm. supplemental bill that understands the interconnectedness between Ukraine, Taiwan, uh, of course, Israel, and the border, right. he's going to try to uh, politicize this and, and be provocative and divisive. When did Ukraine become so provocative, though, for Republicans? Donald Trump. Yeah, and, two and words. The, the, the alignment between Putin and Trump. Who is continuing to celebrate over and over and over? It's Putin. Even Speaker Johnson's proposal, nothing makes Putin happier than what Johnson proposed yesterday, to divide us, to divide our, our small-D mm -hmm. Democratic 
allies at a time when he's trying to, to push. So we have to be able to zoom out and help the American people zoom out. That's something that I've been trying to do in my district to explain, even just to understand the ties between Iran and Russia. The, the provocation that Iran is, is uh, enabling is intimately intertwined with what Putin is doing and wants to see happen. What are people saying in your district? What, 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 is, what is the top question they ask you? I mean, the number one thing consistently, continually, is the economy. Mm -hmm. What are we doing to lower costs, to lower health care costs, housing costs, prescription drug costs, grocery costs? And we've been doing that. I mean, that's, that's the encouraging thing. And I think, frankly, Johnson and the far right see that. And, I mean, they've, said, they've than, said that they're doing this whole right. border uh, situation and not participating because they don't want to help the president politically. Yeah. And, and again, they continually and increasingly say the quiet part out loud. And uh, that is important that we shine a spotlight on that. That's what I've been trying to do in my district. I talk about uh, delivering relief and, and defending rights. We're, we're delivering relief on all of these different uh, pain points you're feeling from capping insulin costs to bringing down housing costs and, and grocery costs. And we're making sure that as the far right tries to take away, in my view, fundamental rights, reproductive rights, voting rights, and so on, we're also defending uh, those rights. And when I believe when we're on that ground, that, that is what the American people stand for. From yeah. your perch on the House Armed Services Committee, uh, what's your assessment of the airstrikes uh, that uh, have occurred in the, in the last 24 hours? And how, how do you see uh, this playing out uh, over the next few weeks and months? I think it was absolutely the right calibrated, thoughtful, but strong and credible deterrent that we needed. I mean, we have allowed and seen Iran continue to test us, push us, ratchet up. Mm -hmm. And when they miscalculated and killed our soldiers, which we have, we cannot lose the humanity of, mm -hmm. the swift response and the strong response, uh, I think, was merited. Give, give the president credit, particularly for focusing on the Quds Force, Iranian forces. That was a significant decision and one that I agree with. Mm -hmm. Any concern? I mean, we've talked a lot this morning about the Wall Street Journal reporting of Ben Gavir, um, uh, Israeli politician, far-right extremist, and the influence on Prime Minister Netanyahu and Netanyahu's own comments. Yeah. Uh, there are six American hostages still being held by Hamas. You, Netanyahu's not talking about a two-state solution. Are you concerned that this conflict could widen? I'm incredibly concerned at, of course, Ben Gavir's comments and the prime minister's comments to re to flat out reject a two state solution, to flat out reject um, the ability for the Palestinian people to continue to aspire and, and achieve their own state. Uh, and and I, that is out of line with our longstanding policy. And I think it's morally indefensible. And, and I say this as someone that is a strong supporter of Israel and the people of Israel, but we're seeing an increased divergence between, I believe, the interests of the U.S. and Israel and our alliance and Netanyahu, and that, that's something that we have to address. And I know the president is uh, doing his best to address it, but that's something that we can't lose sight of. Congressman Pat Ryan, thank you so much for getting yeah. up early and being with us. Thank